Hey guys, you guys are about to spend the day with me on set, so let's see what kind of trouble we can get up to. Mwah. How long does it take for Sophia Carson to get ready for her role as Evie? The whole transformation is just so fascinating. Which star shockingly has five body doubles? And which body parts do Disney have to cover up for Dove and Boo Boo? Could be. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joy. Let's jump right in. Blonde Ambition I saved up my money to buy a wig in New York. As Mal, the daughter of Maleficent, Dove Cameron sports deep purple hair that without a doubt complements her skin tone and brings out her beautiful blue eyes. But did you know that Dove didn't dye her hair for the role? In fact, she's wearing a wig. These wigs are specially made where a mold of the actor's head is taken. It's a long process. I'm saving up my money and I'm buying a wig. <laughs> what didn't she like about it? The color. In fact, when she first saw the wig, it wasn't purple enough for her. She said in an interview with J14, I didn't like that it was lighter. I wanted it to be really violet, really purple. The wigs took a long time to make, but getting them on while shooting also took quite a long time. The first step, a wig cap. And we are about to put on what everybody wears under their wigs. It's very glamorous. It's called a wig cap so that it can keep all the hair down. Then comes the pins and... And then we're gonna get more on top and then we're gonna put the wig on and we're gonna put even more pins and then we're gonna glue it. A lot goes into this. No staples? <laughs> According to Sophia Carson, or Evie, the daughter of the evil queen. It took her almost three hours each day to prepare for shooting. Because Evie's fashion sense is so unique and important to the character, her costumes included a lot of intricate details, but more about that later. Her blue wig took an hour to secure in place, and with all the dance choreography and hair whipping going on, it was vital to make sure that the wig stayed firmly in place, and looked good of course. Someone else who wears a wig? China and McLean. My favorite hobby, planting wildflowers, making lighthearted mischief with fowls, taking candy from babies, emotionally manipulating loved ones. I'm gonna go with taking candy from babies. Yes, Uma, Ursula's daughter's teal braids are actually extensions. The perimeter of China's hair is braided and the rest is a wig. Who knew? Her wig process was a lot quicker than Dove and Sophia and China really loved her long locks. I am getting my wig put on. I have the front two rows of my actual hair braided with colored extensions, and the rest of this back here is a wig. So people are really confused when they see it. They're like, is your full head braided? Like, how long did that take? And I'm like, five minutes. <laughs> While Dove and Sophia spent hours getting their wigs put on, someone else actually took the plunge and bleached their hair. Yep. Playing Carlos, son of Corrala Deville, Cameron Boyce went from his naturally dark brown hair to a shade of platinum blonde. And while it didn't take as many hours getting ready every day on set, the process was not all fun and games for Cameron either. To bleach his full head of hair, Cameron spent six hours in a salon. Six hours! And since the color is particularly hard to maintain, the upkeep and regrowth turned out to be quite a handful. What's more, bleaching takes a toll on the health of your hair and scalp. That's the level of dedication the beloved Cameron brought to the role. Rest in peace, dear Carlos. Seeing double. Speaking of Cameron and his incredible work ethic, did you know that Cameron was only 15 when they started filming the first Descendants film? This meant that legally, Cameron was considered a minor. When it comes to film and legality, there are strict labor laws, especially when it comes to working hours. This meant that the production team had to actually hire body doubles in order to meet their production deadlines. Wild! Cameron revealed in an interview that he had five body doubles, including a stunt double, a dance double, and two picture doubles. Their faces are obviously never shown, but all the doubles had to be adorned with Cameron's trademark freckles. Did you ever spot one of them? Let us know in the comments. War paint. These girls might be bad, their makeup is anything but. When I have a crush on someone, I <laughs> help them with homework, invite them to a big game, ask them on a date, use a love spell. I give you the love spell every time. And that's all thanks to Hollywood makeup artist Tana Lynn Moldovanos. In an interview with Cosmopolitan, she spilled all the secrets on how to look like your favorite Disney villains. Tana says the key to the perfect look is definitely preparation, so a clean and smooth canvas that will be hydrated is very important. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? Magic mirror in my hand, who is the fairest in the land? No. No, it's on the wall. Is it, is it magic mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? Mal's look isn't super obvious, but she does emphasize her cheekbones like her mother and she wears lavender eyeshadow. Evie sports her mother's bold red lip and smoky eyeshadow and Uma wears Ursula's signature teal eyeshadow. 
Sophia has quite the beauty routine for herself, and it's no wonder her skin is as flawless as it is. Other than SPF and exfoliation, Sophia likes to go makeup-free when she's not working to give her skin a break from all the heavy makeup. She also swears by face masks, while Dove calls her approach to skincare selective maximalism. What does that mean? Dove likes to use a wide range of products and tailoring her skin needs to how it feels at any given moment. So what does this include? Cleansing, toning, serums, face oils, moisturizers, eye creams, sunscreen, lip balm, and face masks. Wow. But it obviously works. Dove's skin is seemingly poreless and flawless. I think it helps the product seep in. It might just like wake your skin up and be like, hello, have color. But I do this thing <laughs> where I But what if they could only have one beauty product? What would it be? Um, a nice nude lip is always great. Oh, good call. Oh, a red lip. with like a tinted yeah. moisturizer. Right. The nude lip, oh yeah, that is so you, right? Yeah. Are we feeling, are we Freshly inked. So while the children of Disney's most notorious villains might be walking on the wild side, something they're usually not is tattooed. But this doesn't go for the actors who play these roles. So this includes hours in makeup covering up any visible ink. Who has tattoos, you ask? Well, Boo Boo Stewart, who plays Jay, the son of Jafar, has a few. Six to be exact. His biggest one is on his left shoulder, and it's a portrait of the late actor Heath Ledger wearing his iconic Joker makeup. He also sports a paw print, a symbol from his role on Twilight, the words Bite Me Ranch, two Japanese character tattoos, a quote on his wrist, and numbers and letters on his hand. But there is someone else on the cast who outnumbers him. Dove Cameron has 14 known tattoos, the first one she got when she was only 14 herself. Most are tiny and in plain sight and have to be covered by makeup. These include two snake tattoos, the phrase, candy is dandy, and a gun shooting out a rose which she got in memory of her close friend Cameron Boyce after his tragic passing. Someone who got really close with her fellow castmates was China, so close in fact that they got matching tattoos. Now that's friendship. Thomas Doherty, who plays Harry Hook, and Dylan Playfair, who plays Gil, Uma's trusty sidekicks, got together with China, and the trio inked up with tiny anchors once filming had wrapped. Isn't that the cutest? China posted all about it on Snapchat, saying the anchors symbolize their roles as pirates. But what did China think of her costume? Stay tuned to find out. If the shoe fits. A major transformation when it comes to fantasy films like this is definitely the wardrobe. My brain was just off, and so I started pumping back. And how amazing is the Descendants' wardrobe? Did you know the costume designer of the films, Cara Sorn, was the first runner-up on the first season of Project Runway? She's clearly talented. Cara said that her inspiration for the costumes came from the villainous parents, like Miles Green and dragon designs inspired by Maleficent who turns into a dragon and breathes green fire in Sleeping Beauty. Each of the kids has a personal icon relating their family's history. Miles is obviously the dragon which is emblazoned on the back of her coat. Evie's is the signature red heart and Uma's is the shell necklace. Jay is always wearing the gold cobra of his dad's staff and Carlos has a design of crossed black and white dog bones. The wardrobe was very extensive and included more than 1,500 custom-made costumes that were created from scratch and by hand. Wow. China had some difficulty with her costumes, saying that the skirt, heels, leather jacket, and heavy braids made it very hard for her to move at times. And she had to dance on top of all that. Yikes. Uma's costumes are based on Ursula's teal makeup, and her outfits include a lot of seashells and trinkets. While Jay mainly wears primary colors that seem to hint at Aladdin, and Carlos's hair is reminiscent of his mother, and he mostly wears red, white, and black, just like Cruella. On the other hand, Sophia and her character Evie share a great love of fashion, something Sophia is very excited about. Evie generally wears a lot of blue with touches of red and yellow. Pick a color. Evie blue, of course. She almost always has a gold or red accessory in her hair and a red pendant necklace like the Evil Queen. In the second film, Evie launches her own clothing line, Evie's Four Hearts, which has come to life and is available in stores like Target and Coles. Sophia was thrilled about this news, saying she sees a lot of herself in Evie. Her favorite piece? A reversible bomber jacket that she says is cool and chic. One side is crushed velvet with the Evie icon on it, and the other is full silk. Sounds amazing. She's also obsessed with a shirt that has the word chillin' like a villain in Evie Blue. We all need that shirt. Sophia has some wise words to share when it comes to fashion. Check it out. And most important, be confident. Be you, and always be chillin' like a villain.
That's it! What do you think about all these crazy and cool transformations from your favorite Disney villain kids? Let us know in the comments!